It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, and in Newport, visitors can enjoy Christmas at the mansions. And Michaela is live this morning at the Elms, getting a first look at the festivities over there. So, hey, Michaela, good morning to you. Hey, good morning to you. I'll tell you what, what a picture perfect setting we have here at the Elms and really at a couple different mansions throughout the holiday season. You're going to want to make sure you head on over to Newport to check them out. Joining me right now is Trudy Cox. She's just going to give us a, a quick little rundown of just some of the many things that, that are new this year. We have a lot going on at the Newport mansions. Every Saturday night, people have the opportunity to enjoy the breakers at night, which is very unusual. Lots of music, eggnog, cookies. You can bring your family and spend two hours and have a wonderful, wonderful time. Every Sunday, Santa is in one of the houses, so mm -hmm. it's worth looking at the website to determine where, which house he is at. We have an exhibit at Rosecliff, which is closing at the end of December, so we are in the final weeks of enjoying that exhibit, Splendor at Sea, um, Gilded Age Yachts at the turn of the century. Ooh. Absolutely phenomenal. So there is a lot going on. You can go to Marble House. House, mm -hmm. and local garden clubs decorated the mantles so each one of them is creative and inspiring and gives you ideas for your own home and we're gonna see some of those ideas coming up a little later on in our show now we've both been holding these it almost looks like mansion bucks what are we looking at <laughs> this is a sweepstakes ticket and for five dollars you can give a friend a great great Christmas present or a stocking stuffer if you win you get to spend three nights in Newport. Wow. Uh, you get to have breakfast in the conservatory here at the Elms. You get to have an elegant dinner at Marble House. You get private tours behind the scenes. There are so many things going on, and mm -hmm. it's a wonderful way to make a donation to the Preservation Society of Newport County. Good point, because that's where the, the money will go towards. And what exactly does the Preservation Society do? I mean, they, they clearly preserve these yes, homes? Well, we take care of 11 historic mm -hmm. houses, probably the largest houses in America. We tell stories about the families who lived in these houses and the people who worked in them. There's a servant life tour mm -hmm. here at the Elms, which is extremely popular. And we have a really new tour coming up that is going to debut at the end of January called Beneath the Breakers. Mm -hmm. And that will give people the opportunity to see an underground tunnel that connects the caretaker's cottage 350 feet away from the house uh, so you get to walk through that tunnel and walk through the basement and learn how the breakers was mm -hmm. built in under 24 months which is an extraordinary story and that's really the benefit of going on any of the tours here at the mansions because the history behind them is so important and it influenced how we kind of live our lives now and just why these homes are so important and it's so funny to think that they were homes <laughs> summer homes summer at one point right. uh, the breakers as she mentioned is clearly you know probably one of the most popular I know a lot of school groups go there as well we had a chance to check out that new tour get a sneak peek take a look the breakers the largest of all the Newport mansions and full of facts that may surprise you so when you're above the property you would never guess that there is a 300 foot long tunnel underneath the ground all right so we're underground Yes. We're underground. In the old boiler room, new boiler room. How are we how are we addressing this? This is <laughs> the old boiler room, which has just recently been restored. In fact, we're still doing the restoration because in the middle of January we are opening up a brand new tour for the public called Beneath the Breakers. They've done a lot of work. If you can imagine, six months ago, these pillars were absolutely rusted completely through. There were holes in them. If you put your finger in, it would fall apart. Oh my God. And so um, our construction crew, which is one of the best in the country, I believe, has done a phenomenal job in bringing these back to what they should have been. The coal was brought in from the street and deposited down a chute into those rooms right there. Oh wow. And then somebody would come and shovel the coal into the boilers and then create the heat, which would then be pumped into, through a tunnel that we're going to see in a minute, Okay, into the basement and then into the house itself. To the tunnel we go. So Trudy, why was this house even made? Why keep the boiler so far from the Breaker's Mansion? Very good question. The first Breaker's burned down in 1892. It was a horrific fire. 
That left such an impression on Cornelius Vanderbilt that he said he would never build a house that had fire in it again. You'll learn and see a lot on the tour. We have just come 300 feet from the boiler room and we are right now standing directly below the front entrance to the breakers itself. You can't see it, but we are right above us. Our visitors are walking in the front door. What's old is now a work of art. This is the Breakers Breakers. And this was in operation until just about the year 2000, if you can imagine it. It's still slightly live because that mm -hmm. goes back and forth a little bit. This is beautiful, though. But you can see that uh, the den is designated. This is the billiard room B. So every single part of the building is somewhere here. Catch a glimpse of some of the original electricity. This runs completely through the basement. One of the things that we're doing with this tour is we're trying to have people understand what it took to build a house, 70 rooms. It was built in under <laughs> 24 months, which is an extraordinary feat. Mm -hmm. And then when it was built, how did the plumbing work? How did the electrical work? Right. How did the heating system work? All of these questions that I think anyone who owns a house is going to be interested in because this is an extraordinary house to have to take care of. So that's the purpose of the tour, Beneath the Breakers. It is a very cool tour. You're going to want to make sure you check that out. It starts next month. And when we come back this morning, we're going to give you decorating tips. There's going to be a musical performance, so don't miss it. We'll be back after this. Thanks so much, Audrey. Now, over the weekend, you may have been busy decking the halls, but when it comes to holiday decor, there's nothing quite like Christmas at the mansions. Michaela is there live this morning at the Elms getting a look at the beautiful decor there for the season. Hey, Michaela. Hey, Will, you said it's nothing quite like Christmas at the mansions. They are decorated to the nines. I'll tell you what, not that they need it either because the mansions are beautiful, but if you have a fireplace at home and it's not quite decorated yet, we have some tips from a decorating pro. Take a look. Here at the Newport Mansions, we decorate 28 different mantelpieces among the three houses that are open for Christmas at the Newport Mansions. You me in the past that what is kind of pre-existing determines where you're from there. So if you look at this and you saw the greater room, you'd see that um, there's a lot of champagne colored molding and white molding mm -hmm. and the accent color and all the frescoes above the doors are blues and mauves and browns and so that's where we get the color scheme. It may look like a lot, but you can do this. The major point when you're attacking a big mantelpiece project like this is to get your layout in advance. So you'll see that this is the central focal point and we've created a triangle around it with these urns and trees. Then add the details. Every pot rim has a garland on it um, with our color scheme and then just a flourish at the base of the focal point and we bring it down to the ground with candlesticks and poinsettias. Not sure how much color to incorporate? Jim suggests three, two muted and one strong. In this case the muted colors are a sagey green mm -hmm. and an ivory and then our strong color is the blue. Some groups have taken the decorating to a whole new level. At Marble House, we have seven regional garden clubs. Each have taken a bedroom mantle on the second floor, and we've given them this challenge. You know, take your cue from the room, uh, take the theme from perhaps who lived in that room, and then go to town. We place no restrictions other than they cannot touch anything that's pre-existing. Expect lavish decor, just like when the homes were lived in. There was a lot of entertaining done here. Mm -hmm. um, they would have decorated mantelpieces, they would have had centerpieces, it just would have been summertime. So, not at all unusual for there to be over-the-top decorations here, it's just that they weren't here for Christmas. See, you can do this at home. You can create something beautiful just like this one here at the Elms. I don't know about you, but when I'm decorating, I love to put on some holiday music at the same time. So break out those decorations. We're going to have a live performance when we come back. Yeah, and I am near a beautiful piano right now with John Black, who is going to play some Christmas classics for us. So first of all, good morning and welcome back. Good morning. So good to be back. Thank you for having me. I say welcome back because you always perform at the mansions around the holiday season. Yes, I'm in my seventh year here. It's been wonderful each every and every time. So where can folks see you throughout the, the holiday season? So obviously I'll be here. I play for each of the holiday evenings. So straight through after Christmas, I'll be here at the Breakers and Marble House. 
House. Um, also, this Sunday, I'll be conducting a very special event in Warwick. The Greenwood Concert Choir is a 50-voice community chorus that I conduct, and we'll be putting on Come, Let Us Adore Him, a wonderful program with handbells, adult voices, children's voices, soloists, organ and piano wow. at Greenwood Church at 5 o'clock this Sunday. Great. They're going to hear a lot of classics, and you play a whole variety of, of Christmas medleys. I do, and I love hearing all the different sounds in the spaces here at the mansions. Um, it's so wonderful to hear something really grand in the Great Hall of the Breakers, something like... It just, it's just so wonderful to hear the space fill up with music. It does sound very grand. How about if we want to like, you know, pick up the pace a little bit, kind of get the people dancing? Yeah, we love to do some, some, some fun things like... Now, what, um, what song will you perform for us this morning? So I'll be playing a concert piano arrangement of Joy to the World. Okay. John Black, take it away. John, just keep it going. Play us out. We're going to be here live every morning this week, so don't miss it. Merry Christmas. <laughs>